In this video, we're going to discuss the function of a full wave bridge rectifier. Um, what we'll do first is walk through some of the components and then we'll walk through the function and end off with peak inverse voltage calculations. Um, first thing to note is coming in, of course there'll be some sort of voltage supply. If this is given to you in anything other than V peak, you should be converting it. Um, for all electronics, we need to be using peak values. Once you've got your peak value, the next thing in the circuit would be this transformer. Normally used to step down, but not always. Uh, your supply voltage to your working output voltage. And an example of this might be if I were to give this some numbers, 5 to 1. Meaning that the primary voltage is going to be 5 times larger than the secondary voltage. These dots that I've circled indicate that the secondary will be in phase with the primary. So this secondary voltage will look just the same, only in this case five times smaller. Uh, the other thing I'd like to note, and I mentioned it in previous videos, is that these grounds are connected together. They're drawn this way to simplify the circuit, but you could, if you wanted, draw those two together like that. Right? So keep that in mind as we go through the function of this circuit. Um, what we're going to do now is take a look at how this circuit works. Let's start with the positive alternation. Oh, I lost my dot. There. We'll start with the positive alternation. So when this goes positive, the secondary will also go positive, right? They're in phase. That's what the dots indicate. Meaning that here we have a positive, here we have a negative. Looking at our diodes, if I sort of look at these positives and negatives, I could say, hey, I got a positive here, meaning this diode is going to be forward bias and a positive here, meaning this diode is going to be reverse bias. Nothing's getting through there. So current's going to flow from the secondary through this diode. And now here it's got two options. But of course, looking at it, this diode would be reverse bias, right? It flows in the direction of the arrow, so that's not an option. The only path for current flow would be down through the load. Remember, the grounds were connected back to this point. And now uh, it's trying to get back to the negative. It's trying to complete the loop. And the path of least resistance there is through this diode and back to the source. What that gives us on the output would be something like this. The positive alternation gets through. The only thing to note about that positive alternation getting through is that this peak value here, right, V peak out is actually going to be uh, 0 0.7. Oh, it's not 0 0.7. <laughs> Never mind that. Oh, I can erase it. Hold on. It's going to be 1.4 volts smaller than the secondary voltage, right? And that's because we have two diodes conducting with a voltage of 0.7 each. So that output voltage is actually better than in the full wave. In the full wave, if you remember, we actually had to half it and then remove 0.7. Here we just remove 1.4. So certainly we're getting a little bit better output voltage on this circuit than we did on the um, full wave rectifier. It looks like I've lost my dot again. I'll draw that back in. And now what we're going to do is take a quick look at the positive alt or the negative alternation. So when this goes negative, again, this side being in phase goes negative also, only smaller, which gives us positive, negative. Again, if you notice, this one, which was this diode was forward bias last time, was now reverse bias. This diode is forward bias, meaning that current can flow from the secondary. Through this diode, you'll notice, again, reverse bias here means that the load is the only option for current flow. It comes back, and again, the only option for current flow is through here. Again, two diodes conducting, 1.4 volt voltage drop, giving us the second half of our sine wave flipped over, again, with a 1.4 volt loss. 
I think the function on that's pretty straightforward. Let me wipe this out. The one thing that might not be quite as straightforward would be how peak inverse voltage works. Um, as a review, peak inverse voltage right, is the voltage that a diode has to hold back when it's reverse bias. In this circuit, um, peak inverse voltage, well, if we were to look at it um, when, let's say, this was positive and this was negative, we know that this diode here was forward bias, or letting current flow. Right? It went through the load, came back, and this one was forward bias. So what we're talking then about is how much voltage is this holding back, and how much voltage is this holding back if we imagine them as open circuits. If you work through this, um, I'll go to a different color. If you work through this, current comes in, or and at this point, if this red forward bias diode is a piece of wire, for the sake of argument, that means that at this point here, you have the positive supply voltage, and at this point here, you have the negative supply voltage, right? So it would have to hold back the entire secondary, right? That's what would be here, would be the entire secondary. But that's not the case. There is one diode in there. So this one diode has a voltage drop of 0 0.7. That means that in the peak inverse voltage for these two blue diodes is going to be the entire secondary voltage minus the 0.7 it takes for the one diode that's in the way. And I'll wipe this out and see if I can give that a little bit better explanation here. Alright, looking at the circuit here, put my dot, I keep doing my dot. Alright, looking at the circuit, again, this whole voltage here, let's say, to give it a number, was 10 volts peak. That means at this point here, I have 10 volts. At this point here, because there was one diode, I will have 9.3 volts. It's a point, believe it or not. There, 9.3 volts, correct? Down here, we're going to say this is the negative value of 10 was total. Let's call this zero or reference. That's what we're measuring. That means that in here, if I were to insert a voltmeter, right? If I were to insert a voltmeter, it's going to measure from 9.3 to zero, which is a peak inverse voltage of 9.3 volts. And of course, because it's reverse bias, it's holding it back in the negative direction. So on a bridge rectifier, peak inverse voltage is equal to the voltage on the secondary minus 0 0.7, or if you prefer, it's the voltage out plus 0 0.7. Because you remember the voltage out was down 1.4. So we're just adding one diode back in. And that concludes the video on bridge rectifiers.